our worship service is beginning. I invite those of you at home to light a candle during the prelude so that we may all share in the light of Christ during this time. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning. My name is Memory Stuns, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our worship service through our Facebook live streaming. We have a few staff members and essential volunteers here in the sanctuary with us, so we are really glad that you are worshiping with us from afar. It would be helpful if you would like our live stream so that we know that you are watching. And now I'd like to introduce our pastor, Rather, Reverend Kathy Brown. Thank you, Memory. Good morning, all of you that are joining us. It is truly a wonderful, wonderful joy to have you with us today. We hope that you find our service meaningful and that when these doors finally are able to open, that you will come and join us in person. Will you go with me to God in prayer? Oh, gracious and loving God, we do indeed give you thanks for this day that you have created, this day of infinite possibilities that you have laid before us. God, we are especially thankful that you called us here at this time, a chance to put away all the things that are going on in our mind and the busy things on our list of things to do today, and instead, to be here, to be present to you. God, we know that we don't ever have to ask you to be present to us because you're always there. But our prayer always is, help me to feel your presence. So God, that is our opening prayer this morning, that you help us to feel and experience your presence. Remove the clutter, remove the anxiety, remove the despair that sometimes we feel. Remove that for this time so that during word and music and the way that your spirit moves in us, 
we can have an encounter with the risen Christ so that at the end of our worship service, we can truly say we are transformed. Amen. I invite you to stand, and those of you at home, I invite you to sing loudly because we're going to all put, make sure our masks are on and we're going to sing nice and softly, but to sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 6 of For the Beauty of the Earth, indeed, something for which we give thanks. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord, of all to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord, of all to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord, of all to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of divine, so the world so freely give. For that great, great love of Thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord, of all to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. St. Paul's United Methodist Church welcomes and extends our love to all persons, regardless of age, race, income, nationality, life experiences, sexual orientation, or gender identity. All are welcome into our family. You are invited to greet one another with signs of God's peace. And those of you who are worshiping at home, we invite you to greet those who are there with you and those who are worshiping with us in spirit from afar. Peace be with all of you. And also with you. you. Peace, Stephen. Peace, Susan. Susie. Peace. Please remain standing and join me in the call to worship that will appear on your screen. This is the Lord's Day, the day of wonder and grace. This is the day of worship of one who calls us here. This is the Lord's Day, the day we are given joy and peace. This is the day promised to us, the day of healing and renewal. This is the Lord's Day, and it has come just in time. This is the day we gather with hope, with faith, with love. Now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms Ah. Uh... 
as blessed us our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our lives be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace in cheer us and keep us still in grace and guide us when we send and free us from all life in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reign with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for them it was, is now, and shall forevermore. And now if you would remain standing and join us in the affirmation of faith. Those of you at home, it will appear on your screen. Those of you here, it's on the insert in your bulletin. We believe in God, creator of all things, soul of infinite love, wisdom, and power, ruler of all that is and all that is to come home who is mystery yet revealed. We follow Christ, God's chosen one, who loved and served humbly, who healed the broken and included the outcast, who chose to suffer rather than harm for the sake of the healing of all creation, who gave his life for our redemption and who was raised by God to a new life. In his teaching, in his death and resurrection, and in his presence with us in all circumstances, he reveals God to us. He calls us to serve him for the sake of proclaiming God's grace. We trust that he accompanies us and will help guide, heal, and defend us through all difficulty and suffering. We believe the Holy Spirit sustains us and guides us and empowers us as servants of God's grace. We live as the body of Christ in the power of forgiveness and the reality of resurrection and the light of eternal life. Amen. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. And now if all the children will gather around your screens for children's time with Kathleen Lee.
Good morning, my little loves. How are you this morning? Remember the last time I talked to you, we talked about Eeyore. And I've been feeling a little bit like Eeyore. It's just not been an easy week. But I thought, I wonder what Winnie the Pooh would have said to Eeyore. Probably not straighten up and fly right, but something much nicer than that. And I thought maybe the way that Eeyore could change his attitude would be not to do something for himself necessarily, but to do something for somebody else. Maybe somebody he didn't even know. Because the funny thing about doing something for someone else, it's like a hug. If you give someone a hug, you get one back. And that makes you feel better. So here's my challenge for you this week, and I'm going to try it too. I think we need to find three people every day that we can smile at. And you'll figure out that it's kind of like wearing a cape. You can change people's lives just by smiling at them and being kind to them. Try that out. See how it makes somebody else feel and see how it makes you feel. And I think you'll be surprised. You have a lot of power. Go figure. Let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for each one of these children. They are so precious to us. We thank you that they have such big hearts and such courage. Help them find people this week that they can smile at and help people smile back at them because there's just nothing more fun or more loving than a child smiling. God, we thank you and we ask you to be with us this week. Amen. Our reading from the Psalter this week is from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 8, and then verse 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now let us prepare our hearts for prayer. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. Cast 
Kathleen, I want to <clears throat> thank you for that reminder to smile. I think one of the things that I miss the most right now is being able to see people's smiles because we have our masks on. When I came into the sanctuary, Memory had her mask on, but she said, I'm smiling at you. And so to try to find ways that we can share and we can express that smile. And parents and grandparents, if um, putting your children's or grandchildren's pictures on Facebook is something you do, let us all have the blessing of just post a picture of your child smiling, because I think that will warm our and do our hearts a lot of good right now. So thank you for that reminder. This is the time in our service where we gather together, even through the gift of technology, and lift our hearts together um, in prayer to God with the confidence that God does indeed hear our prayers. Will you go with me to God in prayer? Oh, gracious and loving God, there are so many things that we just want to lay at your feet. Burdens, joys, concerns, fears, and you call us to just put them all there. You promise that although you won't just poof, take them away, you will walk with us and you will help carry all of those burdens. So God, <clears throat> We first come to you in a moment of silence to personally be able to just lay things on your feet that are heavy on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, as a nation, we celebrated Veterans Day this week. So at this moment, we just want to give you thanks for all of those among us who have served. We give thanks for all of those who, have, who are currently serving. God, we hold up our veterans who have come back from war with injuries, not just to their body, but injuries to their emotions, injuries to their spirit. God, we ask forgiveness for the ways that we have often neglected our veterans and ask that you help us to do better at taking care of the men and women who have so willingly sacrificed so much for us. Lord, in your mercy. God, throughout our world, our healthcare professionals are overwhelmed. We ask that not only that you give them the strength and the energy to get through this, but also, God, we ask that you help us do everything in our power to alleviate the pressure that they are under right now. God, instill in us a desire to keep others safe, to do our part, even though we are so tired of this. We are eager to get back out. But God, instill in us a desire to think of others and hold their safety in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God, we ask that you be with all of our elected officials and all of those who are beside, behind the scenes. God, we ask that you help our nation to heal and so that we can be the nation that you have called us to be. We ask for your guidance in smooth transitions. We ask for your guidance in being with all of those as they take office and those as they prepare to leave office. And we lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy. 
God, we ask that you be with our local officials as well, those who are given the responsibility to care for our communities. Help them to make decisions that they may seem bold or decisions that will help keep the people that they have agreed to serve, to help keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up our family, our friends, uh, those who are suffering either from COVID or from other illnesses. We lift them up to you at this time. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we give you our disappointments for the family gatherings that will be put on hold this year, for the vacations that will be put on hold. God, we ask that you just take those disappointments and hold them and then remind us that there will be more Thanksgivings, there will be more vacations. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up all those, those that we don't know their names, but you know their names because you are their, they are your beloved child and you are their God. We lift up all of those who no one lifts in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. God, we ask that you instill in us a desire each and every day to grow closer to you, to walk more humbly with you, and to love kindness. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. peace of the Lord go always with you. May the light of his love shine bright. May the peace of the Lord glow warm within you and go with you from this place. And the peace of the Lord goes on and on. And the peace of the Lord goes on and on. And the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord goes on and on. the peace of the Lord and give it freely to the young, to the rich and poor. Take the peace of the Lord and give it freely and it will come back to you. And the peace of the Lord goes on and the peace of the Lord goes on and on. And the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord goes on and on. 
May the peace of the Lord go always with you. May the light of his love shine bright. May the peace of the Lord grow warm within you and go with you from this place. And the peace of the Lord goes on and on, and the peace of the Lord goes on and on, and the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord goes on and on, goes on and on, on and on. May the peace of the Lord go with you. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. And I neglected at the beginning of the service to say thank you to Susie Law, who is uh, our guest accompanist today. Uh, Phyllis is <clears throat> at a 125-year church celebration today at the church where she served for over 25 years as the organist. And so they're having a, a big celebration this Sunday. And Phyllis, we know you're going to be watching this service later. And so we just want to let you know uh, that we are so glad you are able to be there for that wonderful celebration. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians. It's a letter that Paul has written to the ecclesia or to the community, that which we now call church, in Thessalonica. He and Timothy and Silas had traveled there earlier and they had established the church. And then he sent Timothy back to go check on things. And when Timothy comes back, he tells Paul all about it. And so Paul sends <clears throat> the Thessalonians this letter. It actually, here's a little bit for your Bible trivia, uh, 1 Thessalonians is the oldest book in the New Testament. Scholars believe that it was written somewhere in the early 50s, which was about 15 to 20 years before the first gospel that the Gospel of Mark was written. Now I want to give you a bit of context about this so that you understand this closing part of Paul's letter, which is what the fifth chapter is. Thessalonica was the capital of the Roman province of Macedonia. It was a community that was under Roman rule, and it was fully embedded in the Greek culture, which you may remember worships many gods. And in our scripture this morning, Paul is going to reference getting drunk at night. Well, to really understand that, you have to remember that one of the gods that was widely worshipped in Thessalonica, in Thessalonica was Di Dionysus. Dionysus, the god of wine. And of course, they worshipped this god at nighttime. And it was said that their nighttime worships, their celebrations, had this reputation of becoming very frenzied and very ecstatic and often turned into wild sex parties, which also influenced a lot of Paul's other writings when he talks about sex sexual behaviors that have been taken out of context much today. There is also reference in the scripture that I'm about to read that, <clears throat> that uses the phrase peace and security. And what you have to know to really understand that is these words, peace and security, were stamped on the Roman coins to remind the citizens that the foundation of their peace and security was in the Roman Empire. Thus, when Paul says they will be destroyed, he's not referring to the constructs of peace and security, but rather warns of putting one's faith in the Roman Empire rather than in God. I will be reading all of chapter 5 in 1 Thessalonians, 
the lectionary actually stops at 13, but there are just so many rich words in this letter. So hear these words now from Paul to the community of Thessalonica. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When you say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and put on a helmet for the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. And I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. God. Will you go with me to God in prayer? O oh, gracious and loving God, May the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. For indeed, you are our rock and our redeemer. God, at this time especially, I ask that you help me to step back. Fill me with your spirit so that it is your word, not mine, it is heard. Fill me with your spirit so that it is your word that lands in our hearts and causes us to ponder. Fill me with your spirit so that it is your word, not mine, that leads us to transformation. Amen. Well, I have to tell you that I have come to have a much deeper appreciation of Paul's letters during these last eight to nine months, during these months that we have not been able to gather together as a community. You see, Paul had spent time with the Thessalonians. He grew to love them, and he missed them. And because it was the first century, the only way he had to stay in touch with them was through letters. Letters without the benefit of airmail. You see, the letters were delivered by others who happened to be going that way, or he would find a carrier to take the letter. This letter was one that Paul wanted to make sure 
everyone in the community heard. That's why he commanded them, make sure everybody hears this. You see, he wanted to make sure that the community was staying together, that they were thriving, that they were growing in their love for God and in their love for one another. I now have a much better understanding of that longing that we often hear in Paul's letters. He misses them. And friends, I miss seeing your faces. And like Kathleen said, I miss seeing your smiles each week. I miss the beautiful chatter that filled the sanctuary before worship each week. I miss the way that you all would reluctantly come back to your seats at the end of Passing of the Peace. I miss the way you fill this sanctuary with song. And I miss bowing our heads together as we went to God in prayer with our joys and concerns. I miss the way that you all, this church, St. Paul's United Methodist Church, I miss the ways that you all have developed community through your Sunday school classes and through choir and through the bell choir and the steel drum band. I miss the way that you have developed community by serving <coughs> manna meals together or the ways that you work together with our children on First Sunday Fun Day and all of the other activities. And of course, you all know how much I loved the way we built community through our potluck fellowship dinners. You see, none of us None of us, and as I talk to clergy throughout our community, none of us ever dreamed that gathering for in-person worship and other activities would be suspended for so long. And as the COVID-19 crisis continues to be more widespread and having a crippling impact on our health care system, we know that gathering again in the near future is still not possible. So like Paul, we wait and we look forward to a time when we can be together again. Yes, we wait. Friends, it seems like we have spent a great deal of time waiting these last few months. We waited for an election. We wait for a COVID vaccine. We wait for political tensions to diminish. And we wait to see our families. We wait to gather with friends. We wait to go out to dinner at our favorite restaurant or wait to go on a vacation. Or we wait to just simply go to a movie and have popcorn. We wait. And one of the things that we are learning is that we are not a people that wait very well. And our community finds ourselves forgetting the importance of waiting in ways that keep our community safe. That's what the first century... Christians were doing. They were waiting. They were getting impatient. And as they waited, they were losing hope. And they too were forgetting to wait in ways that kept them true to loving God and loving neighbor. So Paul was reminding them, here's what to do while you wait. Now, these Thessalonians weren't waiting for life to get back to normal whatever that might actually mean, they were waiting for Jesus to show up. You see, he had promised them that he was coming back, and that was the foundation of their hope. But where was he? After all, it had been 20 years, and he still hadn't returned. And they were tired of waiting. And yes, many are still waiting today. 2,000 years later, we still see people proclaiming, you better get ready because Jesus is coming back any minute now. And as we are reminded several times in our scripture, no one knows when that day will be. Personally, friends, I believe it happens each and every day. Every time we see people taking care of one another, loving one another, feeding the poor, working for justice, and dancing in the streets, we see Jesus. But the Thessalonians were waiting for something different. They were waiting for a specific time when Jesus would come back, gather everyone together, and say, job well done, it's over. But Paul was telling them, Don't just sit back on your laurels and wait for that to happen. You have no idea when that day will be here, and there is still much work to be done. 
Friends, it truly concerns me that a recent Pew Research study found that 58% of white evangelicals believe that the second coming of Christ will happen before 2050. Think about that. 58% of the largest group of Christians believe that it will happen in less than 30 years. And so many are pointing to this time of COVID and upheaval as a sure sign that they are right. And so you may ask me, well, Kathy, why does it bother you? It's just their beliefs. It concerns me because many are acting like it doesn't matter what we do while we wait, especially in terms of taking care of this planet. <clears throat> because it won't be here very long if we continue to neglect it. And if these people, these 58% of white evangelical Christians, believe that the second coming, the end, will be here before 2050, these are also people <clears throat> that seem to have an influence on our legislation. My friends, it will be devastating. <clears throat> It will be a devastating impact on our environment if legislation that protects our environment is rolled back. As people continue to believe that we have this ever-ending supply of water or that we have enough landfills for the next 30 years so that we don't need to recycle or that climate change isn't real and it only needs to last for 30 years so it doesn't really matter, friends. We cannot treat this planet, this home that God has graciously given us, as a temporary fixture that we can fully consume because there won't be an inhabitable, inhabitable home for generations to come. Maybe it happens in 30 years, but like you see in the letter to the Thessalonians, they thought it was going to happen immediately. And so that's what Paul was saying to them. Don't sit idly by and just wait because you have no idea when it's going to happen. Can you imagine if Paul would have said, don't sit idly by because it's going to be thousands of years into the future. You see, Paul was reminding them and he's reminding us that it is how we live our life today that truly matters. And so I wonder, how do we continue to live our lives in this period of unprecedented waiting? Paul's very clear. We live our, we live our lives in a way that shows that we are the people of God, not people of our culture. Paul tells them to dress, not with the armor of power and might, but rather to put on a breastplate of love and faith and to put on a helmet or to put on a hat of love. He's encouraging them and encouraging us to clothe ourselves in faith, hope, and love, which are the cornerstones of our Christianity. Friends, Paul is telling us that we are to be dressed as an outward visible sign of who we are. Not because it says Team Jesus on our shirt like a sports jersey might, but because we live a life that reflects faith, hope, and love. Even while we wait. And friends, Paul knows how difficult that can be. That's why he says, therefore... Therefore, I know it's hard. I know what you're going through. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Oh, friends, that is the joy and it is a blessing of being part of a community of faith. When things get hard, we can encourage each other and we can build each other up. And St. Paul's it is one of the things that I have witnessed among you over and over again when we were meeting in person. You encouraged each other during difficult times. And when you noticed that someone was down or discouraged, you built them up through your smiles, through your hugs, through your words of encouragement, through sharing your stories of hope. That is such an important part of being a healthy congregation. 
I can honestly say that in the two and a half years that I have served as your pastor, I have never heard. Now, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I am just saying I have never heard any of you say an unkind word about others in our community. Now, you might speak the truth in love, but never an unkind, spiteful word about anyone. Friends, do you know how rare that is? It is such a gift. And so as Paul reminds us, encourage one another and build each other up. Because friends, encouragement, encouragement to be who God calls us to be is one of the greatest gifts we can ever have. And it's one of the greatest gifts we can ever give to others. Now, some of you have heard me tell this story before. Uh, it's a story of um, one of those big aha moments in my life that happened several years ago. I was going through a very difficult time. Someone that was very close to me had betrayed me. I was hurt and I was angry. And yes, I wanted revenge. I wanted to get back at them. I wanted others to know about this egregious act that had been done to me. And I was talking to a close friend, and I was ranting and raving and <clears throat> going on and on. And this friend could have easily said to me, Oh, Kathy, that's mean. Don't do that. Or she could have said, Oh, Kathy, that's not the right thing to do. Or... Kathy, if you do that, it's going to backfire and things are going to be even worse. But after listening to me, after listening to me spew, she just smiled at me and she said, Kathy, I know who you are and I know what you'll do. Arg. That was not what I wanted her to say. I wanted her to say, yeah, go get him. Fight fire with fire. But instead, she reminded me with those simple words of who I am, a beloved child of God created in the image of God. And I will never forget those words. They were not words of shame or disappointment or judgment. They were words of encouragement words that built me up and friends that's what we must do during these times of waiting so many people are discouraged people are lonely people are depressed people are lost and paul's words to encourage and build one another up are so important during this time right now because encouragement reminds us to be hopeful encouragement reflects not only i believe in you but it also says, I'm behind you and I support you. I grew up playing sports and I was very fortunate to have some wonderful coaches along the way. And for a time in my life, I was a collegiate softball umpire. Now you can tell a lot about a team in the way that they encourage one another. You see, good teams realize that encouraging others makes their entire team better. When the bases are loaded and it's the bottom of the seventh inning with the tying run on third base and the winning run on second, the team rallies behind the batter stepping up to the plate. And if it just happens to be the weakest hitter on the team, they don't throw up their hands in defeat or roll their eyes or sit down in the dugout complaining. No. They rally even louder. The dugout empties as they come out to make a visible stance of, we are here for you. And whether it is a solid base hit bringing in two runs or three strikes you're out, the teammates are there continuing to encourage and offer support. Yes, friends, that's who we are called to be, supporters and encouragers of one another during this time. Paul uses the metaphor of darkness and light, and in so many ways, these dark times we are living in, but we must be the shining light. And what do we do when we find ourselves in the midst of our own darkness? It's easy. 
We borrow the light of others until ours returns. We lean on one another. We reach out to one another. We share our light with those who need it. For those of you who are on the email list, I have encouraged you to read a book by Scott Erickson called Honest honest advent and to join us in a book discussion because you see friends it's one of the ways that we will encourage each other during this time <clears throat> many of the members of our congregation have written advent devotionals which we will have ready to deliver to you the week of thanksgiving daily devotionals that are written to encourage us all during this time my friends I will be the first to admit these are not easy times. But when we all pull together and we can lean on each other and encourage one another, we are going to get through this time. And, and when we meet in person again, we will be even stronger than we were before. You see, I've come to the realization that meeting in person is still far away. So I've been thinking about the ways that we can rebuild community Yes, it's primarily going to be through technology because that's the safe way for us to do that. And I'm going to encourage you to take part in book discussions and other online happenings that we will have beginning in the new year. And then if we're still not meeting in the spring, I'm going to encourage you to help us think about safe ways we can gather together outside to build community. You see, throughout Jesus' ministry, and in Paul's ministry. They both stress the importance of having communities of faith as a crucial element of faith development. And so I ask that you pray for your church, that you pray for St. Paul's as we explore safe ways for us to build opportunities for connection so that we can encourage one another and that we can build each other up. Friends, the kingdom of God is counting on us. The kingdom of God is counting on us to stay connected, to stay in love with God and to stay in love with one another. And even though our world seems so divided right now, with God, we can rest in the assurance that we have peace with one another. Peace with one another as the Spirit of God continues to grow in and among us. Yes, there is much around us to discourage us. But there is so much more within us to encourage us. May we each and every day find ways to share that encouragement. Yes, it is what we are called to do, to live as a child of the light. It is in the name of our Creator, our Sustainer, and our Redeemer. Amen. I invite you to prayerfully sing, I want to walk as a child of the light. First verse. As we prepare to give our tithes and our offering, will you go with me to God in prayer? Gracious and loving God, help us to always remember that all that we have comes from you. 
Help us to remember that when we are discouraged and feel like so much is slipping away, we have our faith and our hope and our trust in you. God, we know that what you want the most from us is our heart and our lives. May we give generously of both of those to you. And may the financial gifts that we give to this church be ones that are used to help us continue to be the church that you have called us to be. Not a church that is focused inward, but a church that is focused on your kingdom all around us. Amen. Before I introduce our final hymn, um, I have to tell you, um, many of you know that uh, <clears throat> if you've been getting our emails that we're focusing on gratitude and giving thanks and trying to think of three things that we can be grateful for each day. I guess it is rubbing off on me because Friday, I had had a, things this week that had happened unexpectedly had gotten me behind. And so Friday morning, I was taking a deep breath and I said, okay, Kathy, prioritize. Think about what has to be done this morning and get it done. What is, what is the first on your list? And I kid you not, 
what went through my mind the very first thing was St. Paul singing this beautiful doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And I was reminded that is always, always first on our priority list. Our hymn of invitation is number 356 or on your screen. Um, it is when we are living. It is also in Spanish. You are invited mm -hmm. to sing it in either English or Spanish. I think Adam has probably put the English words up there. Um, so those of you that are here, if you want to sing in, in, in Spanish, you may do so. Let's sing all four verses of this one. This one. receive this benediction. Indeed, you belong to God. May you go throughout your day, go throughout your week, encouraging one another and building each other up. And may the peace and light and love of Lord Jesus, our Christ, go with you both now and forevermore. Amen.
God's children said? Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great, blessed week.